Hey everybody, what's up? So, episode 6 of WandaVision. Okay, a lot of stuff to talk about today. It might not seem like a lot happened in this episode, except for at the very end, but trust me, there's a lot going on here. So, let's get started. <clears throat> um, so, this episode starts like a, a normal sitcom episode, you know, but this time the, the, the style has completely changed. Like, like, previously, you know, okay, so, I thought that they were going to, like, do the whole, you know, because they're going by decades and all that, so, you know, I thought that they were going to go into the 90s, but I thought that they were going to emulate the style of comedy of shows like, you know, um, Married by Children and, you know, shows like that, but instead what they did was, um, <laughs> they're doing it based off the style of Malcolm in the Middle. So, no more studio audience or laugh track or anything like that. You know, it's more or less, you know, replicating the style of Malcolm in the Middle entirely. And once again, the lyrics of the intro theme song are describing more or less what's going on in the show, you know. Don't try to fight the chaos. Don't question what you've done. There's no way of knowing who's coming by to play. You know, so, you know, whoever's behind all this is, this is more or less their message to Wanda telling them, you know, don't question anything that's going on here. You know, just be happy with the life you've given yourself and whatnot. So, um, and this, uh, since uh, Pietro Quicksilver, uh, Wanda's brother, since he debuted in the last episode, this is actually his first time being featured in uh, one of the show's intros. And um, um, so, yeah, he, he's basically playing like the uncle figure of the family, you know, seeing as how he's Wanda's brother and she has kids now. So, yeah, Uncle Quicksilver is... Uh, who he is now, and, um, so this is a <laughs> Halloween-themed episode, uh, where, <laughs> okay, so, so, Wanda's Halloween costume is her costume from the comics, and, and it's very, very accurate. I, I was so happy to, to finally see MCU Wanda in a comic accurate costume, even if it is, you know, just a... <laughs> tacky Halloween outfit, but, um, yeah, still, it's very nice to see that, and, and you know, Vision even has <laughs> his own Halloween costume, which is, again, you know, a more comic-accurate version of what, what he already looks like. I mean, I thought his MCU appearance was already faithful enough to what he looks like in the comics that they didn't really need to change anything, but, you know, this is even more comic accurate, you know, so, you know, that, that was very nice to see, and, um, uh, <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> this I, I did not expect, so, here's what happens, um, Vision, um, says goodbye to Wanda, says that he's gonna leave to do his job as the neighborhood watch, and, uh, Quicksilver decides to, um, take over what was supposed to be Vision's place, you know, with them going out for Halloween as a family, you know? And, uh, <laughs> when, when Wanda mentions that Quicksilver doesn't even have a costume, he runs out of the house and immediately comes back wearing an outfit that's more or less a comic-accurate version of his comics, uh, outfit. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and it actually, you know, for, for a Halloween costume, it looks pretty great. Like, I, I was not expecting that at all. He's even got the same hairstyle as what he has in the comics. <laughs> oh, it was, oh, it was fantastic. I, I loved it. It was such a great piece of fan service, you know, having these Halloween costumes being the, their costumes from the comics. Oh, I loved it. Now, um, as far as, uh, what's going on in the plot here, um, Quicksilver mentioned something, uh, from his and Wanda's past, um, and it's used more or less as a, you know, 
Family Guy cutaway gag, but um, the reason why this is significant is because Wanda says that's not how she remembers it. So keep that in mind as we uh, continue this discussion along. Um, so yeah, uh, as I mentioned uh, just a few minutes ago, um, Vision says that he's going to go out to do his job as the Neighborhood Watch, um, but that's not actually the truth. Um, what he's actually doing is he's using that as a cover to explore Westview and see, you know, excuse me, what's really going on here, you know. So, uh, back outside of Westview, Hayward is planning to attack Wanda, and now this is important because he specifically says that the nightmare won't end until Wanda's dead. So, <laughs> the reason why that's significant is because Nightmare is the name of a villain who is able to mind control superheroes and he can use their powers while he's mind controlling them. And he's another one that um, people have been suspecting is the one that's behind all of this. You know, you know I, I've seen Festo, Kithon thrown around, but, you know, Nightmare is another one of these, you know, dark dimensional beings, you know, from the underworld that, you know, could also potentially be behind what's going on here, you know, and given what we, we, we know so far and what we still don't know, it's very possible that it is Nightmare. In fact, um, I even saw uh, Comics Explained, uh, they gave a theory saying that uh, it's possible that um, so, there's been a couple of characters in the MCU that have actually been algamations of other characters, right? Like, Ego in Guardians of the Galaxy was an algamation of different characters and wasn't just Ego. Uh, Hela from Thor Ragnarok was an algamation of different characters and not just Hela. So, it's possible that the MCU version of either Mephisto or Nightmare is going to be a combination of those two characters and maybe a couple of others as well. So, you know, rather it be Mephisto or Nightmare, you know, one of those two, you know, whoever it is, it's going to be a combination of those two characters and, again, perhaps a couple of others. But uh, I'm pretty sure it's going to be Nightmare now because of the fact that Hayward specifically said that the Nightmare won't end until Wanda's dead. So, that's definitely uh, something that fans of the comics will take note of, take notice of, you know? So, um, because, uh, <laughs> Hayward and Monica, uh, don't see eye to eye, uh, to put it one way, on how to deal with Wanda, uh, Hayward orders that Jimmy, Darcy, and Monica be escorted off the premises, but as they're being taken away, um, they fight back against their, uh, escortees, or, no, no, no. <laughs> they take out their escorts and, um, they disguise themselves, you know, and get back inside the base. Um, so after that happens, um, so, okay. So as it turns out, Wanda's kids are Speed and Wicked. Uh, I, I, I said, you know, like, I think it was a, a few weeks ago I said that um, that Wanda's kids are not Speed and Wiccan because they're, they're actually, you know, pieces of Mephisto, you know, and that was all based off of things that happened in the comics, but, you know, it turns out now that they are, in fact, Speed and Wiccan, which were Wanda's kids uh, in the comics, but <laughs> I, I still think it's possible that, that, you know, the whole, the kids are actually part of Mephisto's soul thing from the comics could st still end up happening. Um, it's just, there's so many things that has happened in the show so far that I'm not really sure um, what to believe anymore, because Quicksilver refers to them as Demon Spawn. Um, <laughs> you know, not in a bad way, but, but still, the, the fact that he says that... Um, I can't tell if that's just a nod towards the comics or if it's actual foreshadowing for what's going to happen. Like, you know, 
is is it a reference to the comic in terms of fan service or is it a reference to the comic because that's what's going to happen later on because these are events based on what's happening in the comics you know obviously time will tell but for now <laughs> we don't really know and uh, we don't know enough to to make a proper guess um so that'll be interesting to see how uh, that plays out um so, um, while, um, you know, the kids are off, you know, trick-or-treating and whatnot, you know, Wanda and Quicksilver are walking through the street, and, you know, Quicksilver acknowledges that he looks different, you know, and, um, Wanda asks why, and Quicksilver says he doesn't really know, and just makes a guess as, a guess as to why, um, he looks different. So they're fully, fully acknowledging the fact that, you know, he's being played by a different actor, you know, this isn't like the case where, you know, what happened with War Machine in the MCU, where he was played by one actor in the first movie, and then in every other movie, he's played by another actor, you know, this isn't like, you know, he was recast, but, you know, he's more or less still the same person, and they're not even going to acknowledge the fact that he looks different, you know, it's still the same person, so as far as we're concerned, he still has the same appearance. You know what I mean? But this time, you know, it's a different <laughs> actor playing the same character. And <laughs> they're acknowledging that he, he looks different, but it's still the same character from the same universe. You know, and, and we'll get to that. But, you know... <sighs> Yeah, the, the fact that they're acknowledging that he looks different, but it is, in fact, the same character, that that's that's really confusing to me. Again, I don't know what to make of that. We're, we're just going to have to wait until the show plays out and, and see what happens in, in order to really know, because this is so mind-boggling to me that I can't, for the life of me, figure out, you know, what to make of this. You know, this is... Well, not the most confusing thing. Well, actually, yeah, it is because, you know, we'll, we'll get to that, you know, in just a moment. Um, so, um, uh, Wanda runs into Herbert, uh, who is also part of the Neighborhood Watch, and uh, he asks her, uh, she asks him about uh, Vision, and uh, <laughs> he says that Vision's not on duty, um, and, uh, you know, this concerns Wanda, excuse me, because, uh, you know, now she knows that uh, Vision lied to her. And um, uh, when, when, he, when she finds out that um, Vision isn't on duty, um, Herbert asks uh, her if um, she wants something changed, <laughs> you know. So, so basically, you know, I, I feel like this is him subconsciously aware of the fact that, you know, this is supposed to be Wanda's ideal reality and uh, she's supposed to more or less be kept happy at all times, you know. So, you know, he's just trying to do everything he can to keep her pleased, you know. So, you know, that that's interesting, you know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, um... So as I just mentioned, you know, Vision is in fact not on duty, but we already knew that, you know, I, I said that he, he was using that as a cover to explore the neighborhood, and uh, as he's walking through the neighborhood trying to figure out what's really going on here, um, he notices that somebody's repeating the same action over and over again, you know, that, like hanging up some clothes on, on some wires with a pin and whatnot, except they're not actually, you know, attaching the clothing to the wire, they're just going like this over and over again, and, you know, they're doing it perpetually in motion as if, you know, a robot was stuck in a programming loop or something like that, you know? So he notices that, and he continues to walk through the neighborhood trying to see, you know, what's really going on here, and then we get... <laughs> We get probably the most cryptic of the in-universe ads yet, because uh, when I first saw this, I, I completely had no idea what to make of it. Like, 
I, I thought I was confused by the whole Quicksilver situation. This ad really confused me. Okay, so what happens in it is it's it's a claymation ad. <laughs> it's done in claymation, which I actually really like because we don't really see this very often anymore. But basically, it's a starving kid stranded on an island who says that he'll do anything to eat. And then a shark comes out of the water onto the island and, and tells the kid, you know, hey, I used to be hungry all the time. And the kid asks him, what did he do? And the shark says, he snacked on Yo Magic Yogurt. And then the shark gives the kid a cup of the yogurt and the kid tries to open it, but he, he can't get it open and he ends up dying of starvation. And then the ad ends with the shark saying, Yo Magic, the snack for survivors. <laughs> now, uh, <laughs> in the last episode, we, we, we finally established that the in-universe ads are, in fact, um, a metaphor for traumatic events that happened in Wanda's life. And yet, here this ad comes along, and it's completely different from the rest, including not even featuring the people who were in the previous ad. So, <laughs> it, it, it completely confused the hell out of me, because I had no idea what to make of this. I, I, I didn't know what the possible meaning for this ad could have been when I saw it at first. Um, uh, after... Um, Giving some time, you know, I, I've seen a couple of theories thrown around as to what this ad could mean. Um, here's my theory. Here's what, what I came up with um, after I, I, I decided to rewatch the ad myself uh, slowly, uh, thinking about every single line of dialogue that is in the ad. So here's what I'm thinking. Uh, the kid is Wanda and the shark is whoever is behind all of this is, you know, the villain of the show, you know, whatever. Now, Yo Magic is meant to be heard phonetically as your magic, meaning Wanda's powers. So the, the shark, the villain of the show, is feeding off of Wanda's powers as she's using them to create and control this reality of hers, and um, as she's using her powers, the villain is slowly feeding off of Wanda, uh, using her powers, and, and thus, you know, her using her powers is slowly killing her. And, you know, so eventually she will die from him or whoever it is feeding off of her magic, you know? So, you know, her trying to keep up her reality, you know, keep it together, keep it upheld and whatnot, is slowly killing her and she doesn't realize it, you know, and um, I'm pretty sure the, the whole, you know, the, the whole starving thing, like, I'm pretty sure it, it's a reference to the villain, um, the villain's hunger for power, you know, like, like he, it's somebody who feeds off of the powers of others, and Wanda has so much power that he basically only needs hers to survive now, and he, he must have done something to her to, to get, like, <clears throat> this is another thing that, that, that kind of points to Mephesto again, you know, because there's something else that, that we're going to get to later that, that, that happens that, that also refer, refers to Mephesto, but, you know, it, it must have been somebody that, um, you know, must have made a deal with her, you know, like, like you get whatever you want, at, but I get to survive off of your powers or, or whatever, you know. that That's basically what I'm taking away with this ad, like, excuse me. If we're going to continue down this uh, train of thought of the ads are representative of traumatic events in Wanda's life, then this has to be something that we haven't seen yet, and, you know, thus must be the, the most recent traumatic event in Wanda's life. You know, like, like Wanda must have been grieving, you know, over Vision's death, you know, and, uh, 
you know, whoever's the villain, you know, came to her and, you know, made her this offer and um, in exchange for having a reality where she can have whatever she wants, you know, he, he gets to, you know, beat off of her magic. So that's basically what I think uh, this ad means. Uh, again, it's only a matter of time before we, we, we find out who, who the villain really is, you know, and what's really going on here. But for now... That's what I thought this completely perplexing ad meant. You know, that's what I thought it represented. So after the ad, uh, we see Wanda and Quicksilver talking again. And um, when Wanda mentions that she thinks he's a bad influence on the kids, um, he says a whole bunch of things at once. And um, in that list of things that he says, he he says that he he's there to give her grief, you know, and isn't that what she wants? And, um, you know, she questions what happened to his accent. He questions what happened to hers, you know. And, you know, it, it definitely feels like um, she's testing him. Like, like she doesn't actually believe that, that this is actually her brother, you know. Because she did that early in the episode, too. Like, she asked him a question uh, uh, about a kid or, or, or something from, from their childhood who... I don't remember what it was, but, but you know, basically asking him a question to, to make sure that this is really Pietro. And, uh, you know, she, he's, he's, she, he's doing his best to, to reassure that it's actually him, you know, because... Uh, Quicksilver mentions that all he can remember is being shot to death, and then he heard Wanda calling him, so, you know, that's why he's here. So, that's what confirms that this is Quicksilver from the MCU. This is not the Foxman Quicksilver. This is, in fact, MCU Quicksilver being played by a different actor, and them fully acknowledging the fact that he looks different. So, again... What this means, I have no idea. You know, the fact that they're completely acknowledging the fact that he has a different appearance entirely, you know. <sighs> yeah, this is this is uh, quite confusing, to say the least. Um, so, um, it's at this point that the kids reveal that, that they have superpowers as well. Um... Speed is the first one to reveal his powers. Um, uh, <laughs> I, I forgot to mention this. Uh, the kids uh, have Halloween costumes as well, and um, Speed's, uh, uh, you know, costume is more or less Quicksilver's costume, you know, hairstyle and all. And um, <sighs> when he reveals that, that he has the same powers as Quicksilver, um, Wanda tells him, you know, that <laughs> if he's going to break the sound barrier to take his brother with him, and uh, she also reminds them not to go past Ellis Avenue, which, you know, basically marks the border of Westview, you know, where, you know, the perimeter of, of the reality that, that Wanda has taken over and, and whatnot. So that's uh, more or less the defining line of where the border is. Now, back outside of Westview... Uh, Darcy hacks into Hayward's devices to learn of his secret plan, and they learn that Vision has a tracking device inside of him, and Sword has been using it to keep track of where he is while he's been inside of Wanda's reality. Now, inside of Westview, uh, as Vision continues exploring the neighborhood, we learn that the people near the edge of town are moving, which means the closer to the edge of Wanda's reality uh, people and things are, uh, the less she, control she has over them. Uh, not in the sense that she, you know, that, not in the sense that these people have free will, but rather in the sense of um, that, you know, time is basically still, you know, on the border of Westview, so... I, I'm wording this very poorly, but, but hopefully you, you understand what I mean by, you know, the the closer to the edge they are, the, the less control Wanda has over Westview. So, 
Um, and I gotta say, uh, the, the sound, uh, the sound, the scene with uh, everyone frozen near the edge of town is super creepy, and the Halloween setting amplifies that. You know, like like this is one of my favorite scenes in One Division so far because of uh, how well it conveys how, how creepy this whole thing actually is. You know, because previously we we had been only seeing, you know. The, the sitcom lifestyle of um, Westview and whatnot. But uh, now we're actually seeing the, the town as, you know, like an actual full-blown town and uh, what's really going on here, you know, outside of what goes on in Wanda and Vision's life. And uh, it's very creepy, man. Very, very creepy. So... Um, when Vision realizes that uh, nobody's moving, he decides to get rid of his uh, costume and, and don his real appearance, uh, so to speak. And um, he flies up into the sky and he sees a car that's frozen in the middle of the road near the edge of town at Ellis Avenue, to be specific, you know, the border. So that, that gives you an idea of just how close to the edge of Wanda's reality Vision is right now. Oh, and uh, by the way, uh, it goes without saying, obviously, but, you know, the whole thing about, you know, not having control over, uh, or, or rather time being frozen near the edge of Westview, you know, that obviously does not apply to, to Vision for, for whatever reason. Uh, probably because, obviously, you know, this whole idea of an ideal reality for Wanda is pointless without him, so... Yeah, but still, uh, something worth noting that I feel. Um, so yeah, um, so as Vision's in the sky, he sees a car uh, frozen in the middle of the road. He decides to go down there and approach it, and it's being driven by Agnes, who is also uh, mostly frozen. You know, he, he asks her, you know, or rather, she asks him, um, you know, where's Town Square? And, and, you know, Vision tries to give him directions, and she says that she got lost, which is odd to Vision, because apparently this is the town that Agnes grew up in. Uh, we still don't have a last name for Agnes, by the way. Uh, uh, that's uh, also something worth mentioning. Um, so... Uh, Vision does the same mind thing that he did to Norm in the previous episode. And, uh, you know, she more or less snaps out of, you know, uh, the trance that she was under. And uh, Agnes recognizes Vision as one of the Avengers. Now, Vision doesn't know what the Avengers are, which makes sense because, as we uh, established in the last episode, Vision said, you know, I can't remember my life before Westview. You know, so the fact that he doesn't remember what his life was like before Westview um, definitely lines up with him not knowing what the Avengers are. So he has completely no memory whatsoever of anything that happened um, prior to being resurrected by Wanda, you know. So that probably is going to play a part in the next episode, if not you know, further down the line. Um, I think there's only three episodes left in the show, um, actually. So, um, yeah, it's definitely going to come into play next episode for sure, I, I feel, because... Excuse me. I mean, what I mean by that is... Um, you know, I'm sure that uh, Vision's going to end up asking Wanda, you know... What are the Avengers or, or something like that? You know, like, because he's learning more and more things now. So the more he learns, the more questions he's going to have. And it's definitely going to be interesting to see how uh, Wanda is going to handle um, Vision asking her about his life before Westview. Um So, because you, you remember in the first episode, you know, when, when Vision's boss, you know, came over for dinner and, and he started asking her, you know, when did you 
move here into Westview and whatnot, you know, started asking them questions about her and Vision's past, you know, and whatnot, you know, she couldn't answer them, but with the conversations that she's been having with her brother, you know, it's very obvious that she remembers her life before Westview, you know, so obviously she has the answers to the questions that Vision is going to be asking her based on what he knows now, so, you know, how is he going to handle that? We'll have to wait and see, you know, but I certainly think it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. Um, so uh, back to the conversation that, that Vision and Agnes are having. Um, Agnes tells Vision that he's dead and that no one leaves Westview because uh, Wanda won't let them. And, uh, you know, <laughs> Agnes seems to be having what seems like a, a nervous breakdown, you know, from constant maniacal laughter and uh, to try to get Agnes to snap out of that he you know does the mind thing again and and she returns back to her sitcom self so to speak um, now this scene is uh, a little bit confusing as well because up to this point it seems like uh, Agnes had been fully aware of what's been going on inside of Westview you know with this being Wanda's ideal reality and all that, you know, like, like she knows what's actually going on here and she's been playing along, you know, more or less her part perfectly, which is why, you know, when, when Vision went off script in, in the last episode, you know, and she asked Wanda, you want me to take that again, you know, again, acknowledging that this is supposed to be, you know, a sitcom, you know, and she's just trying to follow the script, you know, keep Wanda happy and all that. But now we have her um, more or less appearing to be under the same trance as um, everybody else. And, um, <laughs> you know, it, it, it's very confusing. Like, I'm not sure if this is not the real Agnes or if the Agnes that we've been seeing before is a fake Agnes, or if she's just pretending in this scene in particular just to make Vision aware of, you know, what's going on here, or to tip him off, or something like that, you know? Like, at this point, I don't really know what to believe anymore with what's going on in the show. You, you know what I mean? Like, nothing can be taken at base value. Nothing can be considered real. You know, it's just... <laughs> it, it's like, the, you know, the lyrics say, you know... In, 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 the, in the intro for, for this episode, you know, what if it's all an illusion, you know? So, as far as I'm concerned, you know, nothing can be taken at face value anymore. We can't look at anything on the surface, you know. For all we know, everything can be de deceptive, you know, like... <sighs> yeah, th this is... Oh, th this this show has, has been tripping me up with... with the number of things that have been happening that, that are a contradiction of, of, of past events and whatnot. This is, oh boy, this is confusing as all hell. Yeah. So, after Vision has his talk with Agnes, uh, he decides that he's going to try to leave Westview by walking towards the edge of town. And uh, back outside of Westview, we see that... Monica says that her contact is going to meet up with them in an hour, and before she leaves, uh, Darcy tells Monica that because she's been through the hex twice, her cells have been rewritten at a molecular level, which further confirms the fact that Monica has her powers now. Because uh, in the previous episode, um, you remember, you know, she got her x-ray or whatever, and you know, her body showed up as just, you know, pure light. You know, her, her body just showed up as just a pure light source. So, the fact that they, they, they've now said that uh, Monica's uh, body cells have been rewritten at a molecular level uh, confirms, you know, the fact that Monica Rambo is Spectrum now. Or Photon, or whatever it is that they're going to end up calling her in the MCU. And uh, this also uh, further lays the groundwork for mutants being introduced 
into the MCU, you know, because, you know, Monica, you know, went in and outside of the hex, you know, and survived. But all of these people who are still inside of Westview, you know, they've been there, you know, more or less, you know, since Wanda created this reality for her initially, you know, so who knows what effects prolonged exposure to the hex may have on people, you know, like, as far as we're concerned, you know, all of these people could be mutants now, you know, or, you know, will end up as mutants, you know, after the show ends, you know, whatever's going to happen, so, excuse me, definitely it seems like, um, they're, they're setting up mutants to be introduced into the MCU, which, you know, again, is very exciting, especially for people like me who have been wanting to see the X-Men come to the MCU for a, a very long time. Um, so, despite uh, Monica being told, you know, what's happening to her as uh, a result of her exposure to the Hex, uh, Monica remains determined to help Wanda, so they leave to go meet the contact that she mentioned earlier, while Darcy stays behind and tries to hack Hayward's last firewall. Back inside the Hex, Wanda and Quicksilver again are having a conversation, and this time they're talking about how life, uh, how nice life inside of Westview is, and Quicksilver mentions that their parents would have loved it. Now, in the previous episode, uh, and in episode three as well, yeah, it was episode three. Uh, in episode three, and then in episode five, um, Wanda's brother was mentioned. And then, as we obviously know, Wanda's brother ends up showing up in person at the end of episode five. Now, whether or not that's her own doing, you know, we don't really know for sure, but... Uh, the fact that Wanda's parents have been brought up now, you know, it's it's a thing that's only happened once, so you can't really call it a pattern, but the fact that her brother was mentioned and then came back, and now her parents are being mentioned, that's a sign that there's a possibility that <laughs> her, her parents are going to come back, which means that... um. We could actually potentially end up seeing Magneto in the MCU, and WandaVision may in fact be his debut. I mean, it's probably not going to happen, I'm not going to lie, I, I doubt that that's actually what's really going to happen here, but at the same time, like I said, anything can happen in the show now. You know, as far as I'm concerned, nothing can be taken at face value. There's no limit to the possibilities for what can happen on the show. We've already got, you know, Quicksilver from the X-Men movies, you know, playing MCU Quicksilver. So, <laughs> you know, anything can happen at this point. Anything. There, there, there's no limits to the, to the possibilities anymore. So, it's definitely possible that Here's what I think is most likely to happen. <clears throat> we will end up seeing at least Wanda's father in the show, but it's not going to be Magneto. But it is going to be played by the same actor who played the young version of Magneto in the X-Men Fox movies. So that, <laughs> that's what I think is most likely going to happen. It's not going to be Magneto, but it's still going to be played by the same actor. Regardless, that, that's, that's going to be rather mind-blowing if that happens, because if it is played by the same actor, you know, even if it's not Magneto, that doesn't mean he can't eventually become Magneto. You know what I mean? And again, we've uh, established that... um. Being inside of the hex affects your body, you know. You know, so if Monica Rambo is, is, is Spectrum now, which I'm sure she is, then that means um, Wanda's father being inside of the hex could give him powers as well, you know. So, 
Oh boy. <laughs> they're, they're, they're teasing Magneto's return so much right now. It's, it's, oh man. It's very exciting to, to, to see what, what, what's going to end up happening on this show, you know, in these last three episodes. But, oh man, oh man. I, I absolutely cannot wait to see what, what's going to end up happening. It's it's so exciting. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but yeah, um, let's let's <laughs> let, let's let's get back to the show. Um, so yeah, uh, after Quicksilver mentions their parents, um, he seems to be aware of what Wanda's doing, and um, when he asks her about it, she doesn't deny it. Like, like she did with, with Vision. Like, like, you know, with him asking, you know, how come there's no children inside of Westview? You know, what, like, what are you doing to, to these people and whatnot? Like, like, she denied that she was in control of everything. She's not denying it with Quicksilver. You know, she... He, he's more or less, you know, asking... Well, complimenting her, you know, on the fact that, um, you know, that people's personalities are more or less intact to this, despite the way that they're acting and whatnot. <laughs> but, um, when, when he asks her, you know, how she did it, you know, she says that she honestly doesn't know, you know, how this, this all came to be in the first place. And that does seem like an honest answer for her, you know. Like, Quicksilver tries to get her to answer honestly by earning her trust, you know, saying, I'm not some stranger, and I'm not your husband, you can talk to me. But note that he doesn't say, I'm your brother. Now, this contributes to a theory suggesting that Quicksilver is actually Mephisto in disguise, you know, or Nightmare, or, you know, whoever it is going to be in the MCU, but, um... <sighs> There's a theory that going on that 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 suggests that Quicksilver in this show is actually Mephisto in disguise, um, you know. And and there's another theory suggesting that Agnes was previously Mephisto in disguise, and we saw the real Agnes in this episode, as I mentioned before. But like I said, you know, be, because of all these different possibilities, it's hard to to know exactly which one is is going to end up being, you know. The, the, the real theory, or, or rather the, the theory that ends up being what actually happens in the show. So, yeah. Um, but the fact that um, he tries to earn her trust without saying, you know, I'm your brother, uh, contributes to the theory that um, Quicksilver is Mephisto in disguise. So, uh, as uh, Wanda and, and Quicksilver are talking to each other, um, <clears throat> after, you know, he asks her, um, you know, um, how, how, you know, this all came to be, you know, like how she did it and whatnot, um, one of the things that she says is that uh, she describes feeling, you know, alone and empty, you know, endless nothingness, um, which, again, is a, another description for Mephisto being behind all of this, because, um, you know, one of the things that, that happens is, um, like with Agatha Harkness, you know, like, like, cause she, she's Agatha Harkness, you know, Agnes, um, in, in the comics, you know, she, she was a, a witch, you know, but like, not, not like in the sense of, you know, like, like having magic powers or, or, or whatnot, or being a nickname, like, like a, a traditional stereotypical witch, you know, and uh, as she's being burned at the stake, she's, you know, time freezes around her, and she's offered a deal by Mephisto, you know, and, uh, you know, that that's more or less, you know, how, you know, Agnes, you know, or Agatha Harkness, as she's called in the comics, you know, came to be able to live, you know, for like over a thousand years. So, um, you know, the whole thing about, you know, Wanda feeling alone and empty, you know, and, and then now, you know, she, she's, you know, living this, you know, ideal life of hers that she created for herself, you know, that's another thing that, that hints towards Mephisto, you know, Mephisto nightmare, whatever it is being behind all of this, you know, now she turns away from uh, Quicksilver as she's uh, telling him this and uh, when she looks back at him, <clears throat> 
Um, <laughs> yeah, she sees him as a corpse covered in bullet holes, which, again, one of the things that I said earlier, you know, if we see Quicksilver in this show, you know, how he's going to look to us is not going to be what he actually looks like, you know. So when he ended up showing up in the last episode and he was being played by the same actor as Quicksilver from the Foxman movies, I thought that completely destroyed my theory on that right very quickly. But no, that <laughs> that ended up getting destroyed too because we, we did end up seeing him, you know, as he actually looks. And, and that's another thing that confirms that this is MCU Quicksilver, not Foxman Quicksilver. You know, but again, they're acknowledging the fact that he looks different and everything, you know, so what this all means, I have no idea. Maybe the fact that he looks different is another piece of evidence confirming that, you know, he's actually Mephesto in disguise. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, uh, after that happens, um, we see Vision trying to leave the Hex, and as he's trying to get out, Sword prepares for his arrival outside, and uh, as Vision tries to leave uh, Wanda's reality, he starts to fall apart, which means that it's Wanda's powers that's keeping him alive, you know. So if he leaves the Hex, that means he'll die, because it was Wanda's powers that gave him life again. You know, a a as we saw in a previous episode, you know, he's actually still in pieces, you know, or rather, you know, he still has... The Mind Stone missing from his forehead, you know, he, he's more or less the same way he was, you know, after Thanos killed him in Infinity War, so, you know, Wanda's powers are the only reason why he's alive, so, if he leaves the Hex, he dies, and that's why he starts to fall apart when he tries to leave. <laughs> so, Wiccan, this is when Wiccan reveals his powers for the first time. You know, he's able to de detect Vision's pain, he hears Vision's voice in his head, you know, you know, all of this is happening, of course, as a result of Vision trying to leave the Hex. So the kids run to Wanda and, and, and tell her what's happening to Vision, and this is when the biggest event of the episode happens. <clears throat> Wanda freezes time inside of her reality and uses her power to expand her reality. So the perimeter, you know, around Westview, you know, as far as, you know, how far it goes and whatnot, that increases. The hex increases in size and it's no longer, you know, just Westview that that's being kept inside of Wanda's reality. It's now, you know, a certain amount of area outside of Westview as well, including uh, the sword camp that was, you know, outside of, of Westview monitoring it as well, you know. So everything around Westview got, got changed, you know, all, all the, the lights and telephone poles, you know, the sword camp, as I, I mentioned, you know, got more or less transformed into a carnival, you know, which is basically, you know, Wanda, you know, calling sword clowns and whatnot. <laughs> so, so yeah, um, <clears throat> you know, Wanda ha is basically... Uh, increase the size of her reality now, and um, uh, be be before this happened, you know, as Vision was trying to get outside of Westview, um, Darcy ran outside and, and, you know, tried to help him, but, you know, of course, they, they ended up catching her, Sword um, ended up catching her, and they handcuffed her to a, a car or something, and um, obviously, because of this, um, she wasn't able to get away once the Hex started to expand and um she ended up getting caught inside of it now so uh, it's very curious to see what's going to end up happening to darcy um in the next episode um <laughs> oh man uh, yeah definitely going to be very interesting to see uh what, what, what's happened to, to, to darcy now um so um I'm not exactly sure if the Hex had finished its expansion um, when the episode ends, but we, we do see that Hayward managed to get away, so obviously sword operations uh, have not been cut off completely or anything like that. Like They're obviously still going to monitor the Hex and whatnot, but they're probably going to be more cautious of, of, of doing so now 
uh, because of, of this happening. Like, they're probably going to um, take into consideration uh, the fact that the hex expanded and that it can expand again at any time. So they're going to probably play it more safe with their observations now. Um, and also, uh, the fact that the hex expanded is also significant because, again, it's Wanda who's um, responsible for this reality that she's created for herself. You know, she's more or less the power source, you know, of the reality, you know, so, um, let me see if I can... <clears throat> so, see this controller here? Let me, uh... This, you know, controller runs on batteries, you know? Batteries of this size, you know? If I were to get something else that was bigger than this, um, it would require bigger batteries, you know? The bigger something is, the more power it requires to run, you know? So what happens if, you know, Wanda increases the size of this reality that she's created for herself? It's going to require more of her power for her to maintain. <sighs> so what I'm guessing is going to happen is that it's possible that the hex will increase in size again, at least once, you know, during these last three episodes. And the more the hex increases, you know, the more power it's going to require Wanda for her to, you know, keep it up and whatnot. So, you know, the more <clears throat> power of hers it takes, the more of a draining of her powers on her it's going to be, you know, things are going to start to fall apart, you know. Things are going to get crazy, you know, during these last three episodes. So, um, yeah, there's a lot going on here. I know. I'm very excited to, very much looking forward to the conclusion of the show. You know, like I said, we've only got three episodes left. Excuse me. Very excited to, to see how it ends. Very excited. Very much looking forward to, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what else to say. I, I'm just... Man. It, this show ha has been absolutely incredible so far. And I, man. <laughs> I, I don't know what else to say uh, other than to express how much I, I'm looking forward to seeing what happens next. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I think that, that pretty much covers everything uh, for, for what happened this episode and... Uh, what I think is going to happen next and everything. Um, don't forget, um, you know, show that comes on every episode debuts every Friday, so be sure to tune in to this week's episode, and then hopefully if things work out, I'll actually, you know, live stream my, my, my discussion on what's going to happen, you know, next, uh, next week. Um, so yeah, thank you all for watching. Uh, don't forget to watch the show Friday if you've been keeping up with it. And uh, hopefully, again, if everything works out, see you guys Monday night for our discussion of this week's episode. So, see ya. Thanks for watching. And uh, don't forget to follow me on Twitch and subscribe to the YouTube channel and all that good stuff. See ya. Bye-bye.